Oil is the excrement of the devil. El excremento del diablo. Oil is black blood. Oil is the blood of the dinosaurs. This is the bloodstream of the world economy. Oil is the blood of the earth. We're moving from an era of cheap, abundant energy to an era of scarce, hard to get, expensive energy. At the same time, we are making ourselves dependent on some extremely unstable regimes in some very nasty parts of the world. Keeping the world dependent on oil as long as possible is important. Not one in 50, not one in 100 of the people in our country have any inkling of the potential problem that we're, that we're facing. Increased unemployment, poverty, bankruptcy, starvation. There are all kind of the things that happen when a society collapses. So we enter an entirely new new world of, of quite unbelievable dimensions, and yet it's only a few years away. Hello, folks. I'm a carbon atom, and since I'm an essential part of each of the hydrocarbons in crude oil, I'm here to give you the inside dope on gasoline. Oil is not like wheat. We are not growing it every year. Oil is the outcome of uh, many millions of years of geological history. The great bulk of the world's oil was formed at just two very brief moments of extreme global warming 90 and 150 million years ago. and plants that died in the ocean were compressed by more deposits of sand and over the years uh, these deposits um, squished and compacted more and more and then over time uh, they were cooked which was what we call the kitchen and when the organic material was buried to a depth of about 2,000 meters or chemical reactions converted it into oil This was formed once, briefly, over geological time. Uh, and so we are using this stuff up over one or two centuries. One barrel of oil, the refined product of which, 42 gallons of gasoline, you can buy for a little over $100, uh, will produce as much energy, as much work, as you will get from 12 people working all year for you. Take a, an average man performing physical labor for 25,000 hours to produce the amount of energy that's contained in that one barrel of oil. That barrel of oil, if it's pulled out of the ground in Iraq, can be pulled out of the ground for one dollar. You invest a dollar and you get back 25,000 hours of human labor. That is so, that's the energy source that is so dense, it's essentially free energy. It's all non-renewable, it's all extremely capital intensive, and it's probably the most invaluable raw natural resource we've ever discovered.
You are about to know the thrill of seeing that which has never been seen before. You are about to enter a beautiful, exciting, wonderful new world. The world of 1960. For the first time in history, you'll see... A wonderful new world of Fords. Find cars the last word in wish it were mine cars the dream car of the wonderful new world of Fords. The 1960 Thunderbird. Oil is our God. I don't care if somebody says they worship Jesus, Buddha, Allah, uh, whoever. They actually worship petroleum. Seventy percent of the barrel of oil is refined into transportation fuels, which include motor gasoline, diesel fuel, jet fuel, railroad fuel, and maritime fuel. Ninety-eight percent of all transportation energy comes from oil. Construction of an average car consumes somewhere between the energy equivalent of 27 and 54 barrels of oil, depending on whose statistics you use. Uh, a computer, the construction of the average desktop computer, consumes 10 times its weight in fossil fuels. A microchip consumes 630 times its weight in fossil fuels during its construction. For every calorie that you eat in the United States, and probably a similar number in other industrialized nations, requires 10 calories of hydrocarbon energy. There are 6.4 billion people, I think, living on the planet now. Um, most of them are reasonably well-fed, and that's a consequence of what, what was called the Green Revolution in the second half of the 20th century. The Green Revolution consists in very large measure of fertilizing land with petrochemicals, fertilizers that are derived from petroleum. Farming has changed more in the last 50 years than it did in the previous thousand. A farmer today can work five times the land his father worked and still have time for leisure that his father never knew. The petroleum that runs these modern hired hands has not confined progress in farming to the fields. Life is easier for the farm wife, too. What it comes down to is that the oil industry has to please Mrs. Martin and millions just like her. Already today, she's used some 87 petroleum products, including the plastic bacon wrapper and the wax of the milk cotton. She'll top 100 before the day is over. The liquids that come out of oil as it's processed and refined create the building block for all of our petrochemical, chemical, plastics, pharmaceutical, these, you know, zillions of things. Fires, insecticides, cosmetics, weed killers, a whole galaxy of things to make a better life on Earth. And you know, it isn't just oil companies that try to outdo each other competing for the customer's dollar. The same story is true of almost every successful business enterprise on the whole planet. Well, whether you know it or not, every single preparation on this beautiful lady's dressing table, every single thing she is wearing, is influenced by oil. Just for fun, let's take away all these articles dependent upon petroleum. Her hand mirror, cosmetics, perfume, and manicure set made of plastics. Her synthetic silk negligee, her silk under... Oh, science can go no further. Значит, Россия вышла на первое место по добыче нефти. На 
например, если во всем мире в 1901 году, 1901 году как раз в этот период, э, значит, Россия вышла на первое место по добыче нефти. И 95% российской нефти давал Баку. Эшелоны, эшелоны с бакинской нефтью шли туда, на фронт. Шли на фронт. Первоначально здесь добывалась самая максимальная нефть. Здесь было добыто э, около 5000 тонн нефти. В 20 году к этому времени Баку был одним из крупных промышленных нефтяных центров. Well, Jeff, I'll just show you. We're here in the United States. And Daddy is down here in Venezuela. Where the Lake Maracaibo oil fields are. That's where Daddy is working, Jeff. And when he finds a place for us to live, we're going down there too. Venezuela discovered oil at the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, the real first discovery was about 1914. The real turning point was on the 16th of December, 1922, when there was a, a blowout in a well that was being drilled at Cabimas. It was the game known as the Day of the Black Rain. 150,000 barrels in the air for two or three days running. And that put Venezuela on the world oil map once and for all. And at one time, Venezuela became the largest exporter in the world. the United States, not Saudi Arabia or the Middle East, that was the world's leading producer of oil. And in fact, much of our military and industrial might arose out of our giant oil industry. We were essentially the Saudi Arabia of the world up until about the 1950s. Miami was a boom town for many, many years. Their attitude was that this was going to last from now on. I know that those people then could not foresee you were ever going to pump all the oil out of the ground in this part of Texas. And they couldn't picture ever running out of oil because it was everywhere and got on everything. <laughs> <laughs> 